number three. This section is a no calculator section. We've been given the, the graph of f prime, and we're going to be asked questions about the original f function and later on about the second derivative of this, or the first derivative of f prime, which is the second derivative of the f function. So some of the keys for this problem are we need to understand the fundamental area of the theorem of calculus. Firstly, that the area underneath the f prime graph is going to give us the displacement or change in the original f graph. And we can also calculate values of f as long as we have some starting point, starting y value, and then we can add on the areas from that fixed point A, area under the curve from A to X will give us the displacement and thus give us the new Y position. The other thing that we need to be careful of is that when we are integrating from left to right, the area above the curve is positive and the area below the curve is negative. However, when we are integrating right to left, it is the opposite. The area above the curve is going to be negative, and the area below the curve will be positive. So we have to be very careful that when we're setting this up. So the first question says the function is differentiable on and satisfies the condition that the initial condition of negative 2, positive 7. So when x is negative 2, the f value is equal to positive 7, and we're given this f prime function, and we want to find the values of f at negative 6 and positive 5. So we're going to set it up this way. So the value of f at negative 6 is going to be equal to, well, we need to start at f of negative 2, which is the value is actually 7. And then from there, we're going to add on the area under the curve from that point negative 2, that's our starting point, to the point x, which works out to be negative 6. So you have to be careful in this one because here we're integrating right to left. And the area under the curve of f prime of x, dx. So looking at, at the area under that curve, from 2, negative 2, so this is important that we understand that that represents our starting point. And we're going to integrate right to left. And so we're going to calculate this area here. Now because it's right to left, this area is going to be 4 by 2. So divided by 2 is going to be 4, but it's going to be negative because going right to left, the area above the curve is going to be negative. So this works out to be minus 4. So then the f of negative 6 works out to be positive 3. We'll set up another integral for f of 5. We'll do the exact same thing. So f of 5 needs a starting point, f of negative 2. And then we're going to add the area under the curve from that point negative 2 to positive 5. Now in this case we're integrating left to right. So the area under the curve is going to be negative. So from negative 2 to the right that area is going to be negative. That's a radius of two circles. So pi r squared divided by 2 gives us 2 pi and that area is negative because it's below the curve. And then from 2 to 5, this area is above the curve, so that's a triangle, a 3 by 2 triangle, so this area is going to be plus 3 units squared. And so when we work out this value, we're going to start at negative 7, sorry, positive 7, and then we're going to take away the displacement of 2 pi, but we're going to add back in the displacement of positive 3. 
So this works out to be the y position at 5 is going to be 10 minus 2 pi. Part 2 asks, on what intervals is f increasing? So to de determine when f is increasing, we look at the f prime graph, and we look at whether f prime is above the x-axis or positive, below the x-axis when it's negative, and we need to make note of when it's equal to 0. So we have to be aware of the 0 coordinates here at negative 2 and positive 2. So at negative 2 and positive 2, here I've done a slope chart, and that's how we're going to justify our answer. At negative 2, we have a f prime of 0, and positive 2, we have an f prime of 0. So we're going to have 0 slopes at that point. And then we check our graph. When is our graph above the x-axis? Well, between negative 6 and negative 2, it is above the x-axis, so the slope must be positive. We're going to hit 0 here, and between negative 2 and positive 2, it's below the x-axis, so the derivative is negative, so the slope is negative. We're going to hit a 0 slope at 2, and at 2, we're going to go back above the x-axis. That means the slope is positive, so it's going to be sloping up like this. So to answer the question then, well, first of all, if we look at this, it looks like there's a local max at negative 2 a local min at positive 2, and with the intervals that are increasing, well, we're going to start at negative 6 and go to negative 2. It's increasing in that region. Okay, it's going to be increasing here, and then from positive 2 to positive 5, in that interval, it is also increasing. When we look at the the mark scheme here, the marks are going to be allocated in question A. So we use the initial condition. So that initial condition of f of negative 2 needs to be shown okay, when y is 7. And then just working out the values of f of negative 6 and f of 5. For B, we need to have some justification. And the answer, having these two intervals, is going to be the answer with the justification that we've used was the slope chart.